I'm Lori Heil, I'm the Groups Director. And I'm Omar Anaya, the Associate Pastor here at EFC. And whether you're joining us in person or online, we're so glad you're here. Here at EMC, we are multi-ethnic and multi-generational uh, from all over different backgrounds, but we come together to worship Jesus. What you can expect from our service today is a kids' ministry moment, some worship time, and an encouraging message from Pastor Rick. Well, if you want to partner with us today in giving, there are two ways to give. Uh, the first way is you can download our E-Free Church app, and at the bottom of the app, you're going to find this icon where you can put the amount that you want to give online. Or the second way, you can. there will be drop boxes in the back of our worship center, uh, and you can put your donation there. Also on the app, you can fill out a connect card, listen to past messages, and fill out a prayer request. We'd love to hear from you. Well, thanks for watching. We're so glad that you were able to join us today. Enjoy the service. Hey friends, one afternoon, Two of Jesus' disciples, Peter and John, went to pray at the temple. As they got to the gate, they encountered a man who could not walk. Rather than giving the man money, Peter gave him something much more valuable. Immediate physical healing in Jesus' name. Peter's healing of the beggar wasn't magic. It was a miracle through the power of God. In Acts 3.12, Peter responded to some of the people who were amazed by this awesome miracle that he had performed through God's power. He said, why are you guys impressed like I did this on my own? The man wasn't healed because Peter was like some super believer. And that's what Peter explained to these guys is that it was through the power of God and God alone. The man's healing made him really happy, obviously. He could walk again. And so he got up and went into the temple and started rejoicing. What kind of miracles do you rejoice for? I know for me, it's the miracle of salvation. That's something that I rejoice over, and I hope you do too. To learn more from our lesson, go to the Lifeway for Kids app, select the Winter Unit for 2021, then select Unit 28, Session 2 from the Gospel Project for Kids. You can then watch the Bible Story video, practice your key verse, or learn about the big picture question. Then stay tuned on Facebook for more Mission Moments and our Kids Pray for the World Project. Thanks for watching. Bye!
Mission Mary Raise us to thy glorious throne Born thy people Born thy people to deliver Born a child and yet a king Born to reign forever Now thy gracious kingdom bring Born thy people to deliver Born a child and yet a king Born to reign Hey, Pastor Rick here, E-Free Church, and whether you're joining us uh, digitally uh, on our online platform, YouTube, Facebook, or whether you're in our li- in live services, uh, just thanks for spending some time with us uh, at this time. I get the privilege of introducing our guest speaker. It is Newt Larson. He has been a pastor, senior pastor for over 43 years, uh, primarily uh, at a place called The Chapel in Akron, Ohio. Thousands of people. Uh, he has been a coach to pastors like me, mentor to me, uh, for guys like me for over 11 years, and just a privilege to get to know Newt. Um, coaching and mentoring is one of those things you hear a lot about, but if I, I tell you, if I could go back in time and do it all over again, I would have done this early in my career. Um, and so whether you're starting out, whether it's ministry or business, whatever your professional field is, or even if like you're a young mom, um, just find someone's a little, a little more ahead of you down the road and just ask for some time. Make sure you click, uh, that you get along real well and pray for each other. But he builds into me and uh, he's going to kick off our Christmas, uh, really our Christmas uh, season, so to speak. Uh, what we're calling still Christmas, because even though it's going to be a different kind of uh, Christmas this year, 2020, it's still Christmas. Even with all the changes, it's still Christmas. And so just uh, welcome, would, would, uh, would you please welcome Newt Larson? And uh, maybe the most impressive thing about Newt isn't all the ministry experience, but up until this COVID time, he was still playing pickup basketball games on Saturday mornings. And uh, that's pretty impressive for a guy who's 110 years old. So anyhow, give uh, an e-free welcome to Newt Larson. So thankful for you, Newt, and thanks for joining us today. Hello, E. Free Bloomington. Great to be with you. I'm Newt Larson, friend of Rick Wagner. You know him. He's your pastor. And uh, we've gotten to coach and, and, and be together on church things for a number of years, and I'm delighted to be here this way for a Christmas sermon on a special Sunday. Thank you for having me. Thank you because it's about our roots, our what we believe and what we see in our lives about uh, uh, the gift of all gifts and how that makes roots in our lives. Can we take a look at Hebrews chapter 1? Yeah, it's a Christmas, it's a Christmas topic. It really is. Hebrews chapter 1, the gift of all gifts for our lives. Long ago, sounds like Star Wars, you guys. Long ago... And in many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But, here it is, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed, here it is, the heir of all things, through whom he made the universe. Happy Christmas, but especially because of Jesus Christ and who he is gift of all gifts. 
I'm going to outline these uh, couple of verses, three of them, uh, in, in, in three ways. First of all, Jesus is God's word to us. But to be a background for that, he says, he spoke to our fathers by the prophets in many ways, in many ways, long ago at many times and in many ways. Well, you think about your childhood or reading the Bible yesterday, and you see Adam and Eve talking directly with God. No question about it. You see Jacob, whoa, wrestling with the angel of God, uh, clearly. You see uh, Joseph having dreams from God and able to interpret them. Daniel, same thing. Ezekiel, visions from God. Long ago, in many ways, God spoke. And at many times, it wasn't the norm once Adam and Eve fell, it wasn't the norm that God would say, Joseph or Benjamin, no, he spoke in very special ways. So that's the background. But then he says this crucial issue, but in these last days, let me read it, verse 2, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Whoa, this is crucial. This is Christmas. This is the incarnation. This is God becoming a human being in Jesus Christ. Happy Christmas. Joyful Christmas. Merry Christmas. It says, for the last time, that you could interpret it that way. I grew up in a a divorced home, so my mom was a single mother, and she was very good at correction and When she said, for the last time, (laughs) my brother and I and my our sister knew, let's listen, for the last time, or this last word is Jesus Christ in these last days. Do you believe that? This is for you. This is for Christmas. Kids, this is to celebrate that God has spoken to us, and his final word, his last word, is the person of his son, Jesus Christ. Do you hear him? This, now, he comes to a manger. It's the incredible, wonderful, believable, while incredible, story of the eternal God, the Son, who always lived, didn't start at Bethlehem, became a person at Bethlehem, He comes into this world as a real human being, fully God, fully man, one person, Jesus the Christ. And it is God's word to us. Whoa. Do you listen to him? Is his word and the teachings about Jesus and everything you hear Rick say from the pulpit about Jesus, is is it changing your heart? God has spoken. And his last word is Jesus Christ. Just a reminder of who Jesus is. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Whoa. Not, 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 uh, not very much before that, he said at the Feast of Tabernacles, John 7 and John 8, The high priest would pour water into a basin in front of thousands of people. One history book says 100,000 would go to the Feast of Tabernacles, their Thanksgiving at, at Jerusalem. And when he poured the water in the basin, it was a picture of of. Of, of the the wilderness gifts from God. Remember, they got water and manna every day. They got water out of a rock. Some of us think the rock stayed with them the whole time. And Paul later would say to the Corinthians, that rock was Jesus. Huh? Yeah, that rock was Jesus. Well, Jesus, when they poured this water, the high priest at the Feast of Tabernacles, speaks out and says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me. Whoa. 
at the same Feast of Tabernacles, when they put the lights the next day up on the temple, uh, historians say they would light up all of Jerusalem. So these torches, which symbolize the torches by night as God guided them in the wilderness, and Jesus yells out from the festival, I am the light of the world. Whoa! This is God's gift to us. You've got to listen. We've got to pay attention. This is the word from God to us, and it's Jesus. You know the story from the Sunday school class. What has four legs and a bushy tail and hops from branch to branch? And a little girl raised her hand and said, It sounds an awful lot like a squirrel, but it must be Jesus, because everything at church is Jesus. That's right. Everything that we have that gives us hope is Jesus, and God's word to us, Merry Christmas, is Jesus Christ. He has spoken to us by Jesus Christ. And friends, in the middle of this pandemic that we're in, in the middle of whatever pain you're facing in your life, God's word to you about suffering and about joy and about eternal life is Jesus. It really is. In these last days, God has spoken to us through his son, Jesus Christ. But it doesn't stop there. Look what he says about Jesus. And he starts this description in these last days, verse 2, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. First, he's the owner of everything. He's the heir of all things. you got to think Jewish for a minute here. Uh, they would see the son as already the owner of the farm, if, if he's the firstborn son. He's the heir of it. But in the Jewish mind, they knew what this meant, and, and he's writing to the Hebrews, and he says, Jesus, the son, is the heir of everything. He's the owner of it all. Did you know the Bible says in Ephesians 1 that, that all things work after the counsel of his own will? It says in the same passage that he will someday present all the kingdoms of the world as a gift to the Father. He's the owner of everything. I don't know if you believe that. I don't know if I can grab that. It should change our lives as far as how we live. He's the, he's the clear owner of everything. And, and we should obey him. He's the Savior too. But I jump, I go, I go ahead. It also says, He's the creator of the universe. It just says here, through whom he made the worlds. The heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. Any questions? He just says it nonchalantly. Happy Christmas. This little baby in the manger is the incarnation put in flesh of the eternal Son of God, who once said, let there be light. And there was light. <laughs> because he said it, it was so. Who, when he did become a human being, would say to a, a sea of Galilee and a storm, stop it. <laughs> Peace. And there was immediate stillness. Because he says it, it is so. In the Old Testament, uh, God split the Red Sea, not, not by sending a committee or a commission of angels to, to stop the sea or split it. No, they walked on dry ground because God had said, split. <laughs> because he says it, it is so. He's the creator of the universe. You can differ if you wish. I believe that the way God made the universe was like that. By fiat, by word of his mouth. Five or six times in the Bible it says he created this universe by his word. Mary became pregnant by the word of the Lord. Happy Christmas. The issue is, look how God has spoken. 
Don't just go to the manger and gentle Jesus, meek and mild, da 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 da. No, that baby, that little hand once scooped dust and made the un- made a human being, and then said these words and made the universe before that. Those ears that in the manger now hear the mooing of a cow and and the bag of sheep. Now and before, hear the worship of millions of angels and your prayers when you pray. Eyes that now blink in the starlight or in the in this little manger once and now again see all that is happening in the universe. Happy Christmas. He's the owner of the universe and the creator of the universe. And the next phrase says... This is, this is a Christmas message. He, he, the, he's the heir of all things through whom he created the world. He's the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. Jesus the Christ is exactly what we need to know about God. He said one time, almost nonchalantly, he that has seen me has seen the Father. Wow! Do you believe that? Don't look around for another word from God. He has spoken in the person of his Son, Jesus Christ, who's his perfect image. Everything he said was from the Father, he said. Everything he shows us shows us what God is like. My next-door neighbor, when we lived in Akron, Ohio, once said to me, well, we were talking about the future and even that all of us must face God someday. He said, well, my daddy said God would never judge sin or hurt anybody. And I said with a smile, well, where did your daddy get that? He said, I don't know. I said, what I'm telling you is based upon history and life and the appearance of Jesus Christ and the word of God, but you're banking your life on something your daddy said, and you're not sure where he got it. I urge you to think that through. The the revelation of Jesus Christ shows us what God is like. His disciples saw it in an amazing way at the transfiguration. Uh, His glory kind of burst through. They saw him in his glory and with a shining of the of, of the eternal glorious God. We've got to believe that, but that's part of the Christmas message. And Jesus displays the love of God the Father because God the Father, Son, and Spirit are one, and he loves you. One time when Jesus described himself, it's an amazing story, he said, I am meek and lowly in heart. He came to the world to wash feet. His disciples were arguing, it was Peter, James, and John in one case, as to which of them were the greatest. Can you see your staff doing that sometimes? Or me thinking that? Yeah, we're too human. But they were arguing as to which of them is greatest. Jesus doesn't say a word. And instead, when they get to the room for the special time together, He washes their feet. The greatest among you, he had said, would be your servant. That's what God is like. But he also must judge sin, it says in his self-description in Exodus 34. Jesus came to show us what God is like. He's also, and this is a word, forgive me, I'm going to try to explain it. I can't, but here we go. Verse 3, he's the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, the image of God. And it says, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. (laughs) Any questions? He upholds the universe by the word of his power. So he's the sustainer. The word means he holds it all together. This makes it Quite a Christmas story. This little baby in the manger, 
Gentle Jesus, meek and mild, okay, and the angels sing to him, and yes, he cries. And when, by the way, when you come to uh, away in a manger and it says no crying he makes, just go, no, no, he did cry. He's a real human being, but he's also, by virtue of his office, eternal son of God, the sustainer of the universe. <laughs> he holds it all together. Staying with this Christmas message, I want to say what I think those, those phrases mean, or that phrase, the sustainer of the universe. He holds it all together, and it's quite a big system he holds together. Let me ask Siri something. Hey, Siri, how many stars are in our galaxy? Here's an answer from universetoday.com, astronomer's estimate. That there are 100 billion to 400 billion stars contained within our galaxy. Though some estimate claim there may be as many as a trillion. Any questions? <laughs> One more. Let me ask. She's my friend. Hey Siri, how many galaxies are there in the universe? Here's what I found from universetoday.com according to astronomers. There are probably more than 170 billion galaxies in the observable universe stretching out into a region of space 13.8 billion light years away from us in all directions. Any questions? <laughs> that, that's the universe that our Lord made. And that's what we should honor him for as we ask him to be Lord of our personal lives. Trillions of stars, trillions of galaxies in the universe. And he made it all. So, happy Christmas. Let me just say a couple things about what it means that he sustains the universe and holds it all together. First of all, the order and operations of the universe. Don't ask me to do too much here. I'm out of my field. But he created order in the universe and he holds it together. This is a foreign language to me, but he holds the atom together, the nucleus. The atom bomb is when the atom is caused to explode. He holds it together. It says in Colossians, in the parallel passage, that he holds everything together. And here it says, by the word of his power. The order and, and destiny of the universe, he's above it. It was created by the word of the Lord Psalm 19 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. Please don't look up there and say, look at that sunset. Isn't it cool? No, say, God made that. All the universe or the rainbow. The heavens declare his glory and he holds together the universe by the word of his power. And someday he will say, when he returns with a shout, one author says, I know what the shout is, enough. He returns with a shout, enough. This is the end. And for us, it's the beginning because he's in charge of the order and, and the course of the history, the, the operations of the universe. The second one that he holds it together is the course and climax of history. Yes, we're talking about Christmas, but we're also saying this is the baby, this is the Son of God that we celebrate and honor as our Lord and Savior. Do you? Can you believe, uh, scientists, historian, whoever you are, kids in junior high, he, he's, he holds the course of history together. I don't get that. I can teach it and say it, but here's what some of the writers of, of the scripture say. He makes nations great and he destroys them. Whoa. In Isaiah it says, he makes, he rules over the nations and the people are like grasshoppers. Not big deals. Not at all. It says in the Psalms, his kingdom rules over all. In one of the passages I referred to in Ephesians, it says he accomplishes all things 
according to the counsel of his will. Whoa! We're not here to play church. Christmas is not about jollies. It's about the owner and creator and keeper of the universe who became a human being to be our example and especially to die for our sins. Let me just refer to the third way, uh, but look at these verses first. According to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. In Isaiah, I make known the end from the beginning From ancient times, what is still to come, I say, my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. Whoa! He is in charge. And the third way he holds it all together, this is very personal, the availability and application of grace. He's in charge of that. The Bible says he's the God of all grace. Look at this verse from Ephesians chapter 4. To each of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. In Hebrews, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace. That's his promise. He's in charge of that. Happy Christmas. Don't forget what that grace means. It's not just saying, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus, or count me in on Christmas gifts, or sure, Jesus died for my sins. I I understand that. Uh, But the demons would say, Jesus died on the cross. True. Jesus rose from the dead. Yep, I was there. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Of course they drop out. When Jesus died on the cross, all your sins were put on him. Whoa. That means when he cried out, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was because Newt Larson's sins and yours were being paid for at that time. He also cried out with joy, it is finished. When you believe in him, his judgment on the cross counts for your judgment. More than that, When you believe in Jesus Christ, his righteousness covers you from then on in God's eyes. The Romans 4 passage says, our faith is counted as righteousness. You have to be perfect to go to heaven. And perfect is a gift through Jesus Christ. So when we believe in him, our judgment is already accomplished. Don't you dare say, I'm being punished for my sins. Nonsense. The punishment is hell and death, and Jesus experienced that, and then our righteousness is his. Covered by that, we should obey him out of gratitude. Are you sure of that? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt, that's the way I live? That's true. That's my Christmas gift. For sure, make it personal. So those are the things that he does. That's his, his wonderful gift to us. And the next verse sums it up about salvation when he says, He is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature. He upholds the universe by the word of his power. And then he says, After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Wow. Almost nonchalantly, but for every one of these Hebrews, he throws this in. After he made purification for sins. Now, every Hebrew knew what that meant. Put your hand on the head of the lamb, son. Put your hand on the head of the lamb. Why, Dad? Those sacrifices in the Old Testament were all a picture of putting your sins on the lamb, symbolically. Now... No more sacrifices. Jesus gives the final sacrifice. Once for all, it says in Hebrews later on several times, one person for all people, one time for all history. He made purification for sins. That's what I'm talking about. He died for our sins, took the punishment, gives us his righteousness. 
Now live for that. Live for him. And the next phrase is so gorgeous. He sat down. Well, what's so big about That's huge. He sat down. Place of authority, right hand of God. It's said three times in the Bible, but his position was he sat down. Let's talk. Let's interview a priest from the Old Testament. A Benjamin, good Jewish name. Benjamin, what are you doing tonight? I'm offering sacrifices for the people. What are you doing tomorrow? I'm offering sacrifices for the people. Can you do something with me Saturday? I'm offering sacrifices. They did thousands and over the total millions of sacrifices. But then Jesus came. Happy Christmas. He made provision for sins. And then he sat down. Now, every Hebrew knew there were no chairs in the temple. No place to sit down because they did sacrifices the next day and on Saturday especially. But this priest, once for all, sat down at the right hand of God. He, He ever lives there to make intercession for us. That's the Christmas message. He sat down. And if I could pull that over to my life and yours, we should sit down. Sit down and rest in Christ. Hebrews 4, chapters later, says, Enter your Sabbath rest. You rest from all your works to get in with God. And now you serve him or you obey him and you love him because you rest in him. Is that true in your life? I wish you a very joyful Christmas because God has spoken to us. And his last word to us before we hear, I'm back, is Jesus Christ. The owner of the universe. The one who created all that is. The perfect image of God. We like what we see when we look at him. And he is all of that, holds it together until just the right time. He'll bring the ship into port at just the right moment, according to his timetable. And if you think he won't judge, he's going to go through every room on the ship and everyone will give account of their lives. Whoa! We can say, I'm with him, pointing to Jesus Christ. Because he is all of this. Rest in that. Sit down. Stop working to get in with God and rest in him and then serve him out of obedience. Share this message this Christmas and live with this wonderful confidence. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Joyful eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. To whom be glory both now and forever and ever. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the gift of your Son and eternal life available through him. As you pray, thank him in your heart. Not out loud, but give thanks. Or say, if it's needed, God, help me know what this means, or how to be sure of this in my personal life, please. God, thank you for hearing every one of us. Help us live in Christ and honor him for who he is. We pray in his name, who lives forever and is our Savior. Amen. Thank you very much.